Hello, hello, hello guys, and welcome back to Joe's Adventures, and today we're going to be taking a quick look through the next Prehistoric Kingdom devlog. Here we've got devlog 36 for the uh, February 2021, so that's going to be fun, and let's get into it. So, welcome to February's development update. With much anticipation, it's finally time to talk about alpha release plans and all the new content we've been working on behind the scenes. And there's a lot of important information in this one, folks, to make sure to read it thoroughly. So, yeah, we've got a big announcement coming up. This is going to be fun. So look at the state of development. We have got ba -ba -da -da, Alpha available March 19th. So everyone's going to be able to get to it. Recently, it's just been the VIPs that have paid the money and select YouTubers and stuff that have had access to this pre-alpha. But... It's going to be publicly available for everyone on March 19th. So that's going to be awesome. So remember to save the date. So this is what we'll go through now is just things that will be included and things like that. So explore the game's core creative systems with basic economy management with a mix of challenge and sandbox mode features. Get up close with the mighty Tyrannosaurus or the lovable Microraptor and design the habitats without environmental limits. So this is going to just be a little sandbox thing, just kind of just give you a little taste of the game, give you a feel for how it plays, give feedback, things like that. So that's going to be awesome. So the initial alpha will include the following. For the animals, it'll include six animals. Well, five habitat animals, one exhibit animal. So we've got everyone's favorite big bad, Tyrannosaurus. Their favorite food, <laughs> Edmontosaurus, we've got Lambiosaurus, Styracosaurus, Nasutoceratops, and Microraptor. That includes their old skins and species. So you'll be getting the old species like um, Anectes regalis and Ugrinalic for Edmontosaurus and Tarposaurus for Tyrannosaurus. So that should be not an issue. It's going to be cool. Also included, there's going to be multi-level pathing. So use the modular system to create corridors and ramps for your animals to navigate around and various behaviors. So animals can engage in a variety of basic behaviors like eating, drinking, grazing, resting, socializing, and broadcasting. Some animals will be updated to include absent behaviors shortly after Alpha's release. So if, if the certain behavior is not in the release itself, it'll come soon after with updates and bug fixes and things like that so that'll be cool and we can see we already got the Styracosaurus in game looks wonderful lovely and we even got this guy in game just how, how beautiful is that look at that field with the yellow flowers just looks incredible i really like this is this looks like uh a nectar it's a really wonderful wonderful animal and then we've got creative so this is probably even more exciting than the animals themselves even though that's pretty hard to beat we've got creative so we have got the terraforming suite. Carve the terrain with six distinct tools. Raise, lower, smooth, flatten, roughen, and erosion. So erosion, I think, is going to be just a kind of a version of smoothen, where it kind of makes it flatter or whatever. I will have to play around with that. That'll be fun. And you guys will have to play around with it on March 19th. So that'll be fun. Get your feet wet with up to three paintable water materials at varying depths. So there'll be a couple different painting materials. I don't want to reveal them, but you can make sure they're different depths and stuff, and it's really going to be cool. So we've also got four paintable biomes. We've got tropical, temperate, scrubland, and woodland are available to paint terrain and forests with. Use the brush intensity to create subtle and stylish gradients between textures and add some more realism to your parks. So you're going to be able to make it either 100% uh, intense or like 80 or 70 or whatever number you like. So you can really just mix and match and make it feel perfect. It's just, it's going to be really, really ultimately creative and that's going to be awesome. So we also have Next, we have 13 structures. So bring your prehistoric kingdom to life with a selection of buildings from the animal care, infrastructure, guest facilities, and enclosure categories. 
So there'll be a few buildings to go in there too, ones that have been revealed. It's going to be awesome. And over 250 modular tools. So this is going to be where Perisic Kingdom really deviates. That's really awesome. Get custom uh, with over 250 modular items, pieces, and plants to build designs of your own specificity. Use the modern styling to pick from seven wall textures or five roof designs. So how it'll work has been revealed. Instead of having different, it'll be like one slab block and then you can change the textures on it. So I think that's really cool because you can change it on the fly. Let's say you have it plaster and you think, no, I want to change it to wood. So you can just change the texture to wood. So that's going to be really, really cool. So you can really just play around with it as much as you like. And we got paths and fences. Choose from 12 fences and seven path materials using an inclusive spline based construction system so it'll be very similar to well not very similar but sort of similar to like zoo tycoon those kind of games not like planet zoo where you kind of have to where it's like very stilted this is kind of like a drag and drop i think you've seen it before that's going to be really cool and you can also enable terraced fence placement to create a uniquely staggered look so that's going to be cool and we've also got saving and loading so you can save your parks and build it up over time with the nature of the alpha save games will likely break upon entering beta or early access launch so if you want to build something truly incredible just remember that it might not be able to play the best in the beta or the early access so just keep that in mind so due to more extensive development being required some previously panned features like object wall recoloring and undo slash redo will be unavailable until beta or early access launch so there'll be some things that you can't do sadly but there we can see some of the buildings doesn't that look wonderful you can see the rocks there plants everywhere these are all modular of course so yeah that's going to be wonderful it really does look beautiful and now we've got management so we've got a basic economy. So provide and for supply and demand with guest facilities and attractions, offset the costs of construction, animal production, and building upkeep by turning a profit. So pretty much just every single capitalist sermon later. That's how it is. Uh, basic power management. So connect and power your park with basic power management. Failure and reboot mechanics have been disabled for alpha. So you can't quite get rid of it yet. It won't go, ooh, <laughs> it won't break out in anything. And basic visitors. What's a park without guests to wander the paths? Additional animations, AI, enhanced model variation, and guest-related gameplay will be arriving in beta and early access launch. So kind of they'll just be walking around, but a lot of the added features will be added in the beta and early access. So here's um, other important and additional info. So, in terms of what you can expect for support during Alpha, we're only looking to tackle stability issues and bug fixes. We'll be making note of player feedback and talking with the community the entire time, but any new or upcoming content we show in devlogs won't be available until beta or early access release unless explicitly stated. So I think that's a good way to go about it. Unless they specifically say it's coming to the Alpha, it, assume it's not going to be coming until the beta or early access. So this is really just them trying to say, just to hold your expectations, this is the plan. So then, we're treating Alpha and Beta as distinct milestones so that we're not simultaneously implementing features and shipping them to a live branch without extensive internal testing or supporting content. By staggering additions between the two milestones, we'll be able to focus on feedback that's specific to what we currently offer rather than diluting results. So that's a really good plan, kind of staggering it so we can get feedback and hear what people think. So that's going to be cool. So that's kind of the enough of the announcement, and then we'll be moving on to the devlog soon. So here we have, for alpha backers who went through Kickstarter, we're trying to establish a reliable and automated distribution method to ensure contributors receive their keys and other rewards in the future. We have specific update. We have specifics available prior to the alpha's release. Regarding general availability, we will eventually be removing the alpha tier over the Critivo store. An announcement will be made specifically when exactly that'll happen. 
Once purchased, there is no end to Alpha playtime. It's always accessible and will be upgraded to the beta. Alpha is an early access launch that's arriving in later 2021. Screenshots, streams, and videos of Alpha can be shared. Show us what you're making. We'll love to see it. So it'd be really cool to put that on YouTube. We'll be able to show all the wonderful stuff PK is doing. And I'm really excited to... It's kind of similar to the old PAX videos that we did. I'm thinking something sort of in that style. And we can just compare and contrast and just see how incredible that is. So we've got developer report. It's almost time to release Alpha and we couldn't be more excited. Our VIPs have access for a bit over a month now, leaving us with a lot of guest feedback and creations to admire. On the dev side of things, each part of the team has been creating, integrating and implementing a bunch of things that should be ready in time. Both Falia Reflections and Water Shading continues to improve a whole bunch of audio has been implemented, including an overhaul set to UI sounds. So look at that water. Tell me that does not look incredible. You can see the reflections of the building. It looks like you just want to go for a nice, lovely swim. And that's kind of what I want to do. Okay. So the visuals of our power management are starting to come together as well. A change in color grading and some temporary but effective highlights to the power radius help us show the range of generators to the player. You'll be getting active visual polish in the future, though they're more than workable for now. And this one's a little science one that I really appreciate. For our feathery friend, Microraptor has received new wing textures and a alula, or bird stun, to prove its fidelity and create an atomical issue. So a alula is, or adula, I won't say adula, I say alula. It's a bird's thumb. So it's a little group of feathers that pretty much every bird have on the digit there it kind of just helps with stability or and moving around in flight it's kind of just like a little extra little finger quote unquote not really it doesn't is it used for grasping it just helped to better maneuver in the air and what's really interesting is there's a little bit of science behind this as well we know that eo avialis which is an anti ornithine bird which is kind of a big word but it means opposite birds it's because their shoulders are kind of organized differently or opposite to how normal or modern birds' uh, shoulders are organized. And they show evidence of a Lalula and plus uh, Proto Avis, which is both lived around uh, in the late uh, 130 million years ago, so like really early Cretaceous. So it seems very likely that they either evolved it independently or. It's something that's ancestral to both groups, so it's very, very likely that Microraptor had at least a sort of basal or what's the yeah, basal or kind of uh, underdeveloped, not underdeveloped, but uh, I'm trying to think of the right word, uh, not as derived as modern birds. So they kind of had like a very basic or not as developed a lula as modern birds so yeah there's a little bit of science for you awesome and i really love how these wings look they look so much better i'm a big fan of bird wings i like drawing bird wings all the time so i like seeing good bird wings in anatomy so we can see look we're getting into the alpha now look at that it's awesome so this is development report animal behaviors we can have a look through here saving and loading polish so we're getting everything going so here's development highlights so we've got animal implementation, modular pathfinding. And we can see here, look, he kind of walking down, having a good time. So with much excitement, we're pleased to say that animals now are able to navigate modular buildings. This is a huge deal for us, and we weren't sure if something like this will be able to do. So we've got it, and that's awesome. Thanks to one of our programmers, Matt, creatures can successfully walk around walls and utilize both ramps and platforms if the space is big enough. We really wanted a level of interaction between modular pieces and our creatures, so to finally see it come to fruition through pathfinding is simply fantastic. So you can see here, built a little ramp, walking down here, and look at this, look at this cutie, look at this regalus. Clearly got himself quite happy. It's a little platform for him to sleep on, so he can sit and watch i think that's awesome i think it's awesome just do pathfinding because it's we'll be able to have animals use platforms we'll be able to have animals 
walk into buildings and stuff. I think that's just so cool. So you got to be careful with some of your smaller ones. If you put anything that they could jump on out of the enclosure, that'd be that'd be cool. So as a result, there are so many more opportunities for creative builds. We understand how much of a game changer this is for the team, literally. And we cannot wait to see our players implement this functionality in the habitats. I think this will be really cool for smaller animals and things like Smilodon. That's going to be cool. And cave bears as well. Since a lot of zoos tend to have climbing platforms for them, I think that it'd be really cool to have uh, be able to make climbing platforms similar in Planet Zoo, not quite as intensive because they won't have animals swinging from trees to trees, just because there's none of those animals really in the game at the moment, like apes. But you'd be able to make platforms for things like big cats and bears and other animals, and I think that's really cool. So we have got audio as well. So. Sound found its way through our vocalization behaviors early in February. Adding audio to the social call, sense response, sad and broadcast calls. We've created a short show showcase, oh, that was a bit weird, demonstrating the new animations and sounds for our Mentosaurus and Pontosaurus. Let's take a look. So let's get ourselves going. Let's see if that's HD. Cool. Man, I like that very, very much. That's cool. I really like these sounds. They just sound realistic as well. It's just so guttural and awesome. It feels like something that a dinosaur would roar, and that's a very rare thing. And I hats off to Brion and everyone who's been making this game. Not just Brion, but I don't want to get to their heads too much, but those sounds, these animals, it's just incredible. You guys should really be proud of yourselves for what you've done so far. So, we've also been working on our distance model to help ground the distinct sounds of broadcasts with the park to deliver more important information about animal distress. So I think that's pretty cool. So you can kind of hear when an animal is in pain or has an issue. So I think that'll be cool. The less you are, the better. So here we've got another foliage showcase. So we've got the field elm, oak, and sable palamento, a uh, saban palamento were added to the terrain and scrubland biomes to introduce more verticality. We're especially fond of the new Palamento. It's great for honing in that prehistoric look. So we can see this is the field elm on the left here, and the oak is right. So this looks like a really nice tall tree, and you can see that there's slight variations within it because they have different parameters, so not all trees are the same size. And I think that just looks awesome. And I love the oak here. That looks awesome. Really great plants. And really help with that prehistoric look. Oh, animals will just look right at home. Really hope you get some actual prehistoric plants as well. So here are the size variations. There's three different size variants for the what's it? The uh, sable palamento. So we can see there's kind of the tall one, there's the thick one, and the small one. The short one, the short stack, thick, and tall. So that's awesome. There's lots of variation. I like that. So including all variants, this brings our number of foliage assets available for Alpha up to 70. So y'all should not be complaining about plants. There's plenty to go around. We're going to be able to make some great things. And now we have the building showcase. So throughout February, we've begun implementing high quality custom walls and roof materials to replace our previous modern texture set. Moving to a more advanced workflow, both in implementation and asset creation, this has allowed us to bring out a greater level of detail with a minimal performance trade-off, including um, increasing texture evolution over two or three times. So we can see how incredible that looks. You can see the stone here and all the different wood and plaster textures. Oh, I think that looks great. That's just incredible. 
So modern textures are this. We can see the glass is not shown there, but we can see this roof. Some of the, they will be recolorable at a later date, but not in this build. So can't wait to change all the colors. And I think that just looks awesome. That looks like a real roof. We can create like a warehouse for our dinosaurs. That's going to be awesome. Create like cool indoor like shelters. I can't wait to do that. That's going to be so cool. So we're aiming to transfer transfer all of our existing buildings over time to this new technique by Elva's release so that modern textures are one to one across the game. So that will be cool. So it just needs some changes, of course. And now we've got hay beds. So all animals need to place to sleep and there's no comfier spot than a hay bed. These items are used to find custom resting spots with a habitat or modular building. So it's kind of worked very similar into Planet Zoo, how you can just place these down and the animals recognize it as a shelter. So you can have some hay bales in there. And look, you can see this is like different sizes, small, medium, large. And you can see these wonderful, I love these rocks. Look at these rocks, they just feel so realistic. I love it. You cannot get over this, how just wonderful it looks. And then you have, this is a custom shelter, of course. So you could have an animal like a Edmontosaurus or whatever species you want to put in its closure. You can climb up the platform and sleep under this and have a good old sleep and be comfortable. You could even put glass there so people can watch. I think that'll be awesome. And now we'll move on to the fences. So... Though the weakest of the bunch, glass fences are a stylish way to include, increase habitat visibility. They come in 1, 2.5 and 4 meters heights, making them ideal uh, window to another world. So we can see here, this is most likely the 1 meter one, the 2.5 and the 4. So that's bloody awesome. So I'm really excited to see if we can get these. They, they can see one way. So you can put these on an enclosure so the animals can have their privacy. Similar to Planet Zoo. The animals can have their privacy. And the people can look in and watch these amazing animals. And I just think that just looks awesome. I'm really happy with this. I think that just looks great. They really fit the style as well. It looks so good. And then we have concrete fences. So... Concrete fences are strong, providing a thick slab of stone and internal steel to hold more aggressive animals. These come in 1, 2.5 and 4 meter variations. So that's cool. We can have these little variations here. These are great for like the ones if you want to have a bit of a distance between the exhibit and the people in the path. I think that'd be cool to have like a little fence and then a big fence. I think that'll be great, especially with like larger animals. We can see this is the 1 meter, 2.5 meter, and the 4 meter. I think this will work great for pretty much most animals, other than maybe sauropods. And But I think that just looks incredible. I really want to see like an elephant fence. You see those ones in zoos that like, they have high visibility, but they obviously can keep animals in. Big as elephants. Something like that would be a cool fence. But I think that just looks great. I really just love the variations as well. And we can see here, look how this... I love this image so much. We can see this is kind of like a portal into another world. We can see a couple of Nasudoceratops that will be in the alpha, of course. In the corner there, we can see the plants hanging off the glass there. Well, it won't be an issue. You've got happy animals. They won't break through. You can see the rocks in the corner there to add a little bit. We can see the plants hanging off, and then you can look out and see the animals grazing and drinking and just enjoying their habitat. I think that's just so cool. So, bringing the total up to 12 types, these that's all the modern fences for now. There will be a few wall variants and new materials we'd like to add down the line, but for this time we're quite content with this core cool, uh, lineup. So that's all good for an alpha, quite good uh, selection. So you have concrete, all these different types of fences, so that's cool. I think that works out perfectly. And we've got a news roundup. So we've got Brachiosaurus, this was announced a while ago. Brachiosaurus is one of the biggest dinosaurs coming to early access. With its neck fully raised, this giant was almost 14 meters tall. A necessary adaption for browsing trees. And these are the animals I'm excited for. I really want to build like a big sauropod house. That's going to be awesome. I really want to make some really nice sauropod enclosures, along with, of course, enclosures for all the other animals. But I don't think there's really a game where you can make a really nice sauropod enclosures. And I'm really excited to give that a go. So yeah, I love it so much. And just look at that one chillin'. They use just mad lads. 
I like the fence as well. It'd be cool to have like a slightly dug in as well. We'll just have to play around. I think it'll be awesome. So here we've got the community spotlight. This is by Dino Bowen. This is a really nice little, uh, we can see the Microraptor enclosure in there and some plants in there. You did a really good job. I really like this building. It's like a, it almost reminds me of like Jurassic World, but good. I quite like that. I really like that design. And then we got another one here. This looks nice. It's like a, oh, look at that. It's just like out of the wild. You can see all the, all the rocks and stuff and cliffs. Looks like something right out of a tropical island. And, or even just a Jurassic Park or Lost World or whatever. Well, I mean, Lost World is not as, as in the Jurassic Park movies. I mean, Lost World as like the original Lost World. I think that just looks awesome. And then we have, this is by Dino Mans. We got Dino Bob, Dino Mans. And then we've got Baludi. And this is a painting of the Protoceratops that was revealed, I think, last month. And I think that looks wonderful. You did a really good job. I really like how you did the scale detail. You should be proud of yourself. Looks quite nice. So thank you for reading February's devlog. Make sure to follow our social platforms to stay up to date with all things Prehistoric Kingdom. Remember, March 19th is a big day for the alpha release. We look forward to seeing what everyone comes up with. Until next time, the PK team. So, I am conflicted because I want to finish this Ancestors playthrough, but I really want to play this for you guys as well. So what I'm thinking is we'll kind of split it up and maybe I'll even live stream some of that. If you guys are interested in live streams, live streams let me know. You can set, comment on this video or or one of the old Prehistoric Kingdom videos. Just comment on a video saying you want me to live stream try and figure out a good time for you guys and announce it i think that could be quite fun if you guys want it so yeah i really 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 hope you guys enjoyed this video guys like and subscribe uh i hope you guys click that little notif notification bell at the bottom there to get notified whenever i upload any videos or anything so yeah i hope you guys enjoy this video guys like and subscribe and bye bye